Prime Minister has right now declared that this is a nutrition month. See, if nutrition has to happen, the most important thing is the soil has to be rich. I know we will think of uh, midday meals, we will think of giving them B-complex uh, ta tablets and this and that, but that's all fine, that is all needed as an emergency measure because we have the largest nutrient deficient population in the world right now. But that can easily change by changing the soil quality. So in terms of nutrition, the human nutrition is very connected to the richness of the soil in a very big way. That is, from, you know, like some of the studies show that from 1999, uh, from 1950 to 1999, 43 different vegetables and fruits, a significant decline in protein, calcium, phosphorus, uh, iron, riboflavin, that is uh, mainly uh, vitamin B2, and vitamin C over the past half a century has happened a significant decline. Some of the studies in India show in the last twenty-five years, the nutrients and the micronutrients in the vegetables that we are eating today is forty percent less than what it was twenty-five years ago. So because of this vegetarian diet, slowly everybody is declaring is no good. When the, all the Western doctors and countries are declaring, you must eat fresh vegetables, in India doctors are suggesting you must eat meat, otherwise there is no nourishment. Well, there is unfortunate reality in this, the vegetarian meals that we are eating do not have enough nourishment. This is simply because the necessary organic content and richness of the soil is missing. What should be minimum two percent organic content has come to zero point five percent. Without agroforestry, I don't see a solution as to how we will provide nutrition for this nation. Nutrition does not just mean giving them extra vitamin pills and iron pills and zinc pills and all this stuff. We need to enrich the soil. Enriching the soil must become part of the nutrition mission. Now that this month has been declared as a nutrition month, which is a very, very important focus because I've been continuously talking about this for the last thirty years. When you walk through an Indian village, I'm talking about reasonably well-to-do states in South India. Well, what is the condition of other states which are Bimaru states is a different matter. In southern India, where the states are considered well-to-do, agriculture is successful reasonably, here, if you walk into the village today, sixty percent of the people, their skeletal system has not grown to full size because they're eating food, but there is no nourishment. They're eating... their staple food has become rice, chili, onion, tamarind in south. In the north, wheat, chili, onion, you know. Uh, when I was in uh, UK, at that time there was a big galata going on in the Indian media about the onion prices. They were trying to yeah. dislodge your government because of the onion prices. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was in a... I was with a family in UK and they're asking, what is this thing about the onion? Why is it so important? I said, it's our staple diet, unfortunately. So, <laughs> even if the stomach is full, there is no nutrient simply because the land is not rich. So, as a part of the nutrition policy, agroforestry is a prime aspect of it. Please uh, keep this in your mind, sir. Agroforestry is the base for in, uh, increasing the nutrient because you are enriching the soil. Unless you enrich the soil, you won't get vegetarian uh, or vegetable meals uh, to be nutrient. And therefore, uh, already we have taken up Rashtriya Poshan Mission, National Nutrition Mission, under which feeding those who are ma uh, undernourished, but also feeding nutritious food, food with more nutrition is also ensuring. And one point which you said was also important about flows to the seashore, sea, because otherwise saline water will come in. And therefore, we have to ensure e flows, that is very important. We have given new slogan, Aviral Dhara, Nirmal Dhara, Swachha Kinara. So, ye Saab Sutra Seashore uh, or river bank, Nirmal Dhara, uh, that is clean water, and Aviral Dhara is continuous, uh, environmentally uh, sustainable <laughs> environment. So, <laughs> of the subject, sir, a little problem is also all these complicated yeah. uh, slogans. We in South India don't understand a thing. 
if it can I be agree. said in the local languages. <laughs> I know yes. we have many languages, I know all of you cannot come up with slogans for all the languages, but in some way it should come because the peninsular is largely non-Hindi speaking, the peninsular part of India. And yeah, if we yeah, don't yeah. understand, if the people, common farmer does not understand what this slogan is all about, then uh, there is no involvement, without their involvement, there is no mission of any kind. So, it's also important, it's communicated, always whatever environmental things or nutrition things communicated by the government, please ensure as you communicate in Hindi, immediately communicate in other southern Indian languages, so that they are yes. not left out of the whole mission. I have started New India Samachar from 15th August and we are printing that into all Indian languages. So everybody will get the copy in his own language and that, that is what is needed. But uh, government circulars are translated into regional languages. The issue is slogans also need to be converted yes. appropriately into regional language. I, I take your point, very important one. Right now, uh, the UN agencies are saying uh, over seventy percent of the children below three years of age are anemic. Fifty-five percent of the Indian women are anemic. So, in a way, if we don't make sure that the women and children are well nourished, we are make we are kind of producing an underdeveloped generation for the future. The only strength we have is our population. If we have a healthy, energetic, inspired population, we will be a miracle. If we have a weak, unwell kind of population, then we will be a great disaster. So this uh, nourishment month is very important to bring awareness, but in terms of action, without enriching the soil, there is no way to enrich human life. So if we must... Uh, people ask me, Sadhguru, what are the three most important ingredients for environment? I said soil, soil and soil, because if this thirty-nine inches of topsoil is well taken care of, almost ninety-five percent of the life on the planet just lives on this, including us. So this soil must be maintained. The soil of this sacred land called, that is called as Bharat, if we main maintain the richness of this soil, the future of this nation is definitely assured. Mm -hmm.